Because you are welcome, praise God. Hallelujah. At this time, you stand to your feet, praise God, for our prayer. We're going to ask Minister Carl Hawkins III to lead us into prayer, praise God. Our Father and our God, yes. it's once again we just come before you. Just want to say thank you, thank you. for our early rise this yes, morning. Lord, we yes. thank you for watching thank over us you. all night long. Thank you. Father God, we thank you for bringing thank us you, once again God. to the house of prayer. Father God, who you said in your word, in your Father word, God, God. you be lifted up from the earth. You said that you would draw all men unto us. Now, Father God, we ask, Father God, as we lift you up this morning, we ask, Father God, that your spirit rest through and abide in this service today. Father God, we ask that you touch the hearts of me. Yes, God. Father God, we ask, Father God, if there's anyone standing anything, in the need of anything, anything God. Father God, you're still a healer. Yes, you're still yes, a deliverer. Yes, God. Father God, you're still making ways yes, out of no way. Yes, and Father God, we say thank you right thank now you. for being God all by thyself. We say thank you right thank now. You. Father God, we ask, Father God, that you know what each yes, and every member yes, in of this God. house today. Yes, yes, we God. ask that you touch like never touch before. God. Touch. Father God, we ask, Father God, that you continue to strengthen yes, up yes, on God. every leaning side, Father yes, God. Yes. Realizing apart from you, yes, we could do nothing, Father. Yes, when you said in your word, it's in you we live. We move and have our being. Yes. Father God, we trust in and we depend on you. Father God, in uncertain times, yes. Yes. Father God, we have no other name to call upon. But at the name of Jesus, you yes. said every knee shall bow and every tongue shall yes. confess yes. that Jesus Christ is yes. Lord. And we say thank you right thank now, you God. Father God, and we pray for all those, Father yes. God, that will be listening live yes. on you. Touch them in the body with We ask that you save them. Those that are not saved. Help them to realize, Father God, that time is winding up. But you said that we all must die. And after we die, we must appear before the judgment seat of you today. That we may be judged according to the things that we have done, whether they are good or bad. So help us right now, Father God. Those that don't know you in the part of yes. their sin, we ask that you save them right now, wherever they may be. Father God, whether they're on the street corner, yes. under the bridge, yes. Father God, we know, Father God, that your spirit yes. is everywhere at the same time. We thank yes. you for being omnipresent. We thank you right now. Now, Father God, we ask, Father God, that you touch the man of the hour, yes. speak yes. to him. Father God, as he bring forth the word of life, have mercy today. We ask that you strengthen him right now. Right now and move right him in a mighty way. Right Father God, we ask, Father God, that he decrease. Yes, yes. And you increase. Yes, that you show up in him, Father yes. God. That he may give us a word. Yes. That we may deep go by. Yes. And say, thank you, right thank now. You, thank you, God. We give you the glory. Thank you. We give you all the thank honor. You. We give you all thank the praise. You. And that's on Jesus' name yes, we yes, pray. Lord, thank you. Amen. 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 Continue to stand. And we're going to do a familiar scripture today, which is our Father, which are in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Father, let thy will be done on earth, God, as it is in heaven. Father, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us, God, our debt, Lord, as we forgive our debt to us. Lord, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us, God, from evil. That is your kingdom, power, and your glory, God. We say thank you. Thank Amen. You, Amen. 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 We thank you. You may take a seat now at this time. We thank the Lord for you coming out to be with us today. Uh, again, I say a beautiful Sunday Amen. in this October month. We say thank you thank for you. all what God has done thank for us. Yeah. And we look around, we're yet in our health, God. Yeah. We yet using our limbs, God. Yes. We're in our right mind, God. Amen. We say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. It's not nothing that we have done. It's all about what God has done. And we're here to give who the praise is. Here goes God to all the praises that do to him, praise God. So at this time now, we know when this is our third Sunday, we usually have Elder Michael Hilton come down and bring the word from for, to us today. And he is here. 
And I know you got a word to give us today like we get every other day, every day yeah. through the week when my brothers and sisters get up to explain the book of the, what the word is saying. We get enough to feed. I heard Ella Holmes said on Thursday tonight, we got enough Holy Ghost uh, yes. in us yes. to yes. live right, yes. to do right, yes. and to die right. Yes. And when we do those things, we will see the Lord. So at this time now, we're going to have the praise team the Lord. another song.
Well, come on, let's give God a praise. Amen, amen. Come on, let's magnify his name in the first place. Bless the wonderful name of Jesus. Oh, come on. I know we're talking about Jesus. Not Michael, not you. The soul says, bless that wonderful name. Say it with me. Of Jesus. Say that again. Jesus. Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of
not good and faithful service. So think about all the gaps you could be missing because we're not yielding to the Holy Ghost. And we can come before God and be all prejudiced as to what we want to give God. But God is required. Whether you want to do it or not, it's a requirement. We give honor to our district elder and his acts as Elder Green and our minister, Minister Hawkins, our deacons, fathers of the faith, mothers, and our ministers, and everyone in their respective places. We thank God for you being here. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the presence of God that don't need music. Thank you for the presence of God that don't need a crowd. Thank you for the presence of God that don't need some million dollar speaker. Glory to God. Glory to God. We thank you for the Holy Ghost that sweet communes with us today while we're here in this place. Father, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus because you declare that if a man speak, let him speak as an oracle of God. And Paul said we are ambassadors of the faith. I'm asking you, Lord, touch my mouth. Use me today. Let me speak your word. Act with me in season. God, with no variations or misinterpretations. Lord, I give you praise for your grace. I give you praise for your wisdom. I'm asking you to speak to my heart today that I may encourage the people that you have led and died for. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody give God a praise. Just right here. Come on, somebody can give God a one praise. Hallelujah. 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 I believe that God is faithful to what he said he would do. And I believe his faithfulness is revealed through his existence in our life today. I want to talk to you today from the subject, not my will, but thy will. Uh, subtopic is... It's not my will, but thy will. Thy will, not my will. I want to go to Matthew 6 and 11. Matthew 6 and 11. Now typically I would, I would generally come from a book and give an expository process on the message, but today I'm going to be doing topical preaching because I'm dealing with the subject, not thy will, my will, but thy will. And the reason why I'm doing that, because after understanding how many times looking up the will of God is in scripture, it is vast. Mother Gladys, it's just not some narrowed down point that you could just say, this is God's will. God's will is revealed vastly in his word, Scripture says that Jesus says, not my will, but I come to do the will of the Father. Then secondly, the, the will of God in his plans, his desire for us, call us for his good pleasure by the counsel of his will. Amen. And then Colossians, I uh, think that's the Lord talks about, uh, this is the will of God concerning you. Come on. Okay. Matthews will say, thy kingdom come, thy will come be done. And so when you look at the scripture on the will of God, you see God's will in everything that he does. So it's just not limited to the word of God. It's limited. It goes to the extent of whatever he puts up under his care. It's his will. And so the will will teach us how to live. But then also the will will guide us in dark times to show us his glory or his love and kindness. The Bible said with Jesus being God incarnated was moved with compassion. The will of God was moved with compassion. That we know that God's will is that God is love. So we see that when you look at the will of God, the will of God is vast. And so that's why I say I want to kind of talk from a topical perspective because I can't count it all in one verse. Because the will of God is through Genesis to Revelation. And there's no page of uh, uh, Mother Johnson that the will of God is not on. There's no creation that the will of God is not For he worked all these things by the counsel of his will. Matthews Minister Hawkins, you have in Matthew 6 and 11. This is what it says. 
Give us this day uh -huh. our daily bread uh -huh. and forgive us our debt uh -huh. as we forgive our debtors. Uh -huh. And lead us not into temptation, uh -huh. but deliver us from evil. All right. For thine is the kingdom uh -huh. and the power and the glory right. forever. Amen. So he go to the verse above that. So thy kingdom come, mm -hmm. thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. I want you to say it again. Thy will, thy kingdom come. Y'all hear that? Thy will be done yeah. in earth as it is in heaven. So he says, thy kingdom come, kingdom. right? Thy will be done. Now, to me, I would say that's quite convenient. Because if the kingdom is coming, then the king is here, and the king has a rule, a will, and a regulation that he wants his kingdom to look like. Right. So that, to me, that makes sense. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. If his kingdom is coming, his will will be done. Mm -hmm. How do you have a kingdom coming, but you're living under somebody else's will? Right. That's, that's a conflict. Because kingdom is the idea of dominion. Right. Supreme. Superior. Kingship. Supremacy. Authority. Come in to give you this word. Sovereignty. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. There's some rule here. Mm -hmm. Then you tap into the word almighty. Come on now, because now the king has authority, but he's also power. Yes. To exercise. To exercise. Right. His power. Yeah. So now it's, 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 to me, it makes sense for his will to be done. Right. Because his kingdom. Come go to Psalms 14. Psalms. I'm sorry, 19. Psalms 19. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. He's the king, his will will be done. The king's will will be done. Don't leave him without that thought in your mind because when somebody else tries to superimpose their will and lifestyles and opinions and oppressions on you, the only will that will be done is the king's will. All right. Thank you. Psalms 19, what it says, Mr. Hawkins? The heavens declare the glory of God. The heavens declare the wills of God. And the firmament showeth his hand in The firmament shows his will. It reveals his thought. It reveals his expression, his desire. There are, finish reading. What's this? Day unto day uttered speak. Every day it's been uttered. And night unto night showeth knowledge. And once it, there is no day, there is not night where the will of God or the glory of God is not expressed. Watch this, y'all got to understand this because the atheist says, show me the evidence of God. And he just said, it's every day you wake up and it's the night that you fall asleep and it's the day you get back up. The fact that you can live in the day, this is the glory of God. Thank you. The will of God Express in creation. Yes. Can I go a little? Can I say this before we go too far? That's why, and I'm not picking on nobody. I want y'all to hear this. The will of God is in what He designs. Yes. That's why He does not make a mistake. Amen. Come in Genesis, and all that He made, He said it was good. He didn't say bad. He didn't say corrupt. He didn't say distorted. He said it was good. But then when the first man sinned, now you got Psalms 50 or uh, 8, iniquity, Psalms 54 and 8, out of iniquity was I conceived. Mm -hmm. Then you got Job, a man born of a woman is full of trouble. Yeah. Shall an unclean thing produce a clean thing? Showing that in God's perfect vision and will, you were perfect and you were good. But when sin showed up, you became corrupt and more. In the theological term, they got total depravity. You're inwardly corrupt. And it's going to take the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost to clean you up. Truly. And so the will of God is expressed. And so he doesn't make a mistake, right? So then why are people... 
want to be somebody else. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm going to just put the hat right there. Right. I ain't going to go into it because I don't want nobody trying to talk about I'm bashing. If God didn't make a mistake and the earth is full of his glory mm -hmm. and the kingdom come and thy will be done to which God will is revealed and shown and expressed to which when we receive uh, uh, when, when Christ returns and we stand before God, we will receive judgment based on the things that we've done in this body. Meaning there's a standard that God will refer back to what he established to determine how righteous. But we say, well, it's this change of generation now. There's so much of it now. God said, my earth is my, my it's still, my glory is still filling the earth. That corrupt in my glory is here. Let me show you. Let me show you. Finish reading. I'm going to tell you. Romans 1 and 18. There is no speech, no speech, language, no language, where their voice is not heard. He's talking about his glory. The word here is two forms of glory that's translated. It's the kabah and it's the shekinah. You know that the Shekinah glory was the glory of, according to, I think it was Exodus of 14, when Moses was coming across the Red Sea, and he asked Moses, what do you have in your hand? And he stretched out the rod, and y'all will remember when the sea opened up? That's what we would call the Shekinah glory, because it's a visible manifestation of God. Mm -hmm. You ain't going to walk away and say, you didn't see this. Mm -hmm. All right. You saw it. And then there's something called the Kabbalah. Meaning, the, it's not just the fact that it's visible, Pastor Hilton. It's the fact that it's weighty. It's pressure. When Solomon dedicated the temple and the glory of God filled the house, they said by the glory, by reason, the ministers or the priests could not minister in the presence of God. Pressure. Here's another form. The only the high priest could go into the holiness of holiness. Right. And if he was found with impurities in him, the pressure would kill him. Yeah. Right. Hop, oh, kid, and when they was up, up bringing the strange fire, Man. the pressure killed him. Mm -hmm. yes, so he said there is no place that is not known, spoke, right? Mm -hmm. So everybody actually may know this thing. I know it. Might. Finish reading and then go to Romans 1 and 18, the last verse. Their line is gone out through all the earth. Uh -huh. And their words to the end of the world. Uh -huh. In them hath he set mm -hmm. a tabernacle for the sun. All right, now go to Romans 1 and 18. So the will of God is God's kingdom. Uh, is God's, the will of God is God's word, is God's glory, is God's manifestation. It's out throughout the, all the earth. No one can miss it. You don't have to, and you know, you got to get, you got to, it'll help you come to some understanding because what it would do is it'll stop you from saying, oh, I got to try to find the will of God. The will of God ain't, it, it's not a mystery. Right. It's not hidden. Mm -hmm. Oh, the will of God, I got, it's, I got, to, I got to pinpoint. Mm -hmm. It's got to be just like this. Right. But when you look at scripture, it's not just like this. It manifests it. It's revealed. Yes, sir. But the will of God reveals itself in the consciousness of man. Watch what he said. Read Romans 1 and 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodly. Because? And unrighteousness of men. Because of what? Tell who me. hold the truth in unrighteousness. Now Psalms 19 said that the glory in the earth is full of the glory. That there's nothing that is not seen. There's nothing that is not revealed. Psalms 8 says, when I consider thy handiworks, I consider the things that you make. What is man that thou art mindful of? So the world, so the, the writer reveals to us that everyone sees this massive glory of God. But the judgment is not against them that see it. It's against them that reject it. Listen to what he says. For the wrath of God is revealed. It's revealed from heaven. Against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men yes. who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Huh? Because that which may be known of God uh -huh. is manifested in them. Uh -huh. For God has showed it unto them. Wait, it's manifest. You see that? In because God, what? Showed it in them. Yeah. Right. 
Wait, wait. You saying it's been revealed? Mm -hmm. They can see it? So when people say, I don't believe in God, you will have to denounce that fallible conscious reality within your moral frame uh -huh. to, 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 to literally uh, uh, deny that and then stand in front of that and create this whole new God world for yourself. Because the writer tells us that. Watch this. Watch how he says it. Go ahead. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world uh -huh. are clearly seen, uh -huh. being understood by those things which are made. So the things are seen and understood by what we see. We know that there's a God because we see it. The earth is full of his glory. It's his kingdom. It's his will. And we can see it. Now tell me more. Even his eternal power. We see his eternal power. And God is. And God is. So that they are without. Who is they? Mm -hmm. Who are the they? The they is going to be shown. Finish reading. Watch this. Because that when they knew God. They. Y'all see it again? Who is they? Because that when they knew God, uh -huh. they glorified him not uh -huh. as God. Neither were a thing. Uh huh. But became vain in their imagination. So they are those that know but didn't glorify. Uh huh. They are those that uh, had the revelation and they were seeing the visibleness of God to denounce God and became foolish in their own thinking. The songwriter said, A fool says in their heart, There is no God, and do all abominable works, abomination unto God. A fool says in their heart, there's no God. And do all. Because when they knew God, listen at it now. Notice, can I say this? The text is not saying these were Christians. We know we always say, well, the Bible was written to the Christian people because the Old Testament was the Israelites. So that's how we got the law. The New Testament was the New Testament church, the continuation of the promise in the first century. And when Christ came, 400 years of silence between Malachi and Matthew, 400 years of silence. And then Christ comes and then he fulfills all that that was spoken in the old. And we say this is now the continuation of his covenant. And we call it the new in terms of the fresh covenant. But this text specifically was carved out for unbelievers so they don't say I don't know God he says you do right. but somehow in your dark lifestyle it became marred it became confused it became deranged you stop serving Osiris you stop serving black power conscious comedic community right. you start going to be a Hebrew Israelite you start wanting to be a uh, your own God. I'm returning back to my divine self, Omar Jubal said in his debate with uh, uh, this scholar I was looking at, Bantu. He was debating when he was a historical scholar. He says, I'm trying to teach our black men or our black folk race to go back to their divine. Mm -hmm. So he acknowledged that there's a divine, but he doesn't know who the divine. Mm -hmm. right. my God, my God. So the text is clear. They know God, but in their foolish hearts, they can't. And let me say this. That's why you can't get this to everybody. If you're about to open up that word and you're about to see everything they say. And if I misquote, you tell me and I'll show you where it's at. Because I pride myself on making sure you understand. Because the text says, it was seen to them. We'll go on. It said, but they became useless in their imagination, uh -huh. and their foolish heart was dark, professing themselves to be wise. What happened? They became fools. I want you to see the continual generation. I want you to see the continual degeneration of go on. And change the glory so of the uncorruptible. Oh, God. now we got it. Now this is it. They done changed. So no longer do they serve Jesus. There's many ways to God now. No longer do they want to worship. They can do worship in their own little way. They change how God's will was designed for people to come in and fellowship and be filled and go out and make disciples and go
go out and evangelize and build the church. Go ye into all the world, teaching, preaching the gospel of Christ and making disciples, baptizing them. Not only in the baptism of John, but the baptism of the Holy Ghost. For John came with water, but there's one greater than John that will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. This thing has to continue alongside with the world and their worldliness. Because though the will of God is revealed, everybody's not going to do it. Amen. And their brains, and that's when you get the distinction. The Christians and the unbelievers. The believers are the ones that submit to the will of God. Amen. I'm just trying to walk you through before I go deeper to my text. And so he says, the earth is full of his glory, Psalms. Matthew's thy will. The kingdom has come, that will be done. And the earth is so full of his glory that they deny him, even though they're conscious of it. Romans. But while they're denying him, go to Romans 12. This is what you do, alongside of what they're doing. There's a people that will not receive the will of God. But there's a people that will receive the will of God. And these are the people that would say, not my will, but thy will. Romans 12 says this. Read. I urge you, therefore, brethren, uh -huh. by the mercies of God, what? that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, uh -huh. holy, acceptable unto God, uh -huh. which is your reasonable service. Uh -huh. And be not conformed to this world, uh -huh. but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That what? By the renewing of your mind. So don't be conformed, be transformed. Because remember, the opposite side of that was the ones that the judgment was falling on, right? So the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness because their mind is renewed, they're conformed to this world, they thought they was wise, they made the glory of God to their own corruptible God, they made their own religion, they did their own stuff alongside of you. Now, you're not like them, you're the opposite. You're not conformed to this world. You are transformed by the renewal of your mind. And the will of God to create the world in which they reject is the same will of God that brought Jesus to save you in which you accept. Uh -huh. yes. And so on the long side of the world living their will, God is living his will Amen. in us, yes. in the church. Yes. Watch what he said, that you may prove that which is what? Yes. Be not conformed to this world, uh -huh. but be ye transformed by the renewing of your Transformation mind. Transformation comes by the renewing of your mind. That ye may prove what? What is that good uh -huh. and acceptable and perfect will of God? Notice that the will of God comes as a result of transformation. Why? Because the will of God is displayed when it comes to salvation, y'all, by glory. Right? Because salvation is not a natural work. Is it a natural work? It's not a work that men should. But it's the grace of God. If he just say he was rich in mercy. And then the writer said that Jesus Christ died and got up on the third day to atone that spiritual. So he's saying in this text, the transformation of your salvation brings you into the revelation of his will and when you become and when the revelation of his will come to you in your salvation then that that time you will prove what is good but until you receive the transformation because remember Ephesians says be renewed by the spirit of your what mind so the transformation is the result of the spiritual renewal upon your salvation. And who is the spiritual renewer? The Holy Ghost. He comes in to renew you daily. And as he said, as my inward man is perishing. But he said, but my outward man is renewed. And while the world is living their way, I'm living God's way. But even in living my way, I have to fight with my own will. I want to show you something. God's will, that thy will be done, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Now, thy will, but that thy will be done. Listen to this. It's not my will, but your will. In the midst of all these wills, 
in the midst of the wheels that I can't choose, your will. The reason why I'm choosing your will, because it was your will that created all the wheels, even the wheels that do not glorify you. So then we need to define, what when, we, when you say will, preacher, in that sense, how do you define that? The will is how you govern your thoughts, your mind. When you govern your mind to desire, there's three things in natural sense. You ain't even got to look at the Bible. There's three things that they talk about consciousness. It's the cognition. It's the knowledge. And it's feeling. They said in your consciousness, you got a thinker. And you got a knower. And you got something that feels. We call that the soul. The mind, will, and emotions. And in the mind, there's a will. And in the will, there's emotions. And your will will determine the emotions that's in your mind. That's why it's important that you interpret stuff right because you will send your emotions all kind of places. Amen. That's why David said, Lord, teach me the will of God that I may do it. Yes. Right. He didn't ask for it because he knew it. He said, teach me how to do it. Yeah. The writer says, then be not conformed. Mm -hmm. Be ye transformed yes. by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that which is good and perfect Amen. will of God. That's the Lord in 5 and 18 will say, give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God concerning you. Mm -hmm. 1 Peter 2 and 15 will say, for this is for this is the will of God that doing by doing, watch this, this is the will of God that by doing good you should put to silence the ignorance of foolishness. Mm -hmm. That's the Lord is 4 and 3 for this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality. Matthew 6 and 10, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. John 7 and 17, if anyone wills to do God's will, he will know rather the teaching of God is true. Is it clear that when God's will is in place, there is a knowledge of God? There's a revelation, there's a transformation, and then there's a knowing. When you get the mind of God, Philippians says, he says, let this mind be in you. That's what? Also in who? Christ Jesus. He says, when we take on the mind of Christ, it's the consciousness of Christ. And when we get the mind of Christ, Christ said, not my will, but thy will. Then therefore, it's God's will. Christ didn't come to do what he wanted. Christ came to do what the Father. Yeah. Then he told his disciples, you do what I do because I'm doing what he sent me to do. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we're all doing the will of God. Mm -hmm. Why is this important? Because when we live in a church that's changing, doctrines are changing, so much stuff is changing, we got to go back to what was written. We can't run from what is true. Because this is where the glory will be at. The earth is full of the glory. But what is the glory on? His will. We wonder why folks ain't getting healed because we're not in his will. The gospel affirms the word of God. But the word is affirmed through signs and wonders and gifts of the Holy Ghost. Hebrews yeah. chapter 2. And when the Holy Ghost shows up, what does the Holy Ghost do? Only affirms the will of God. Yeah. He don't come to do what Michael wanted him to do. He don't come to do what you want him to do. He's coming to do one thing and one thing alone. That's the will of God. He doesn't care about whether you cry or we friends or you, I gave you money or you just ate at my house. He don't have no respect to person. Amen. When the Holy Ghost show up, he's showing up to do one thing, the will of God. Amen. Jesus said, the will of God. Yes, thank you. Paul said, there's no more I than live. But it's the Christ that lives in me. If the earth is full of his glory, if Paul says that it's Christ embedded in his new birth experience, that when you see what I'm doing, you see Jesus in me because it's the hope of glory. It's the spirit of his son. It's the spirit of the promise. It's the spirit of adoption. It's the spirit of my heritage that I may be his good workmanship. Just like the son reveals 
the glory of God by blazing in the sky. Just like the birds reveal the glory of God by with the pretty multiple colors and singing. Just like the trees are swaying with the glory of God and its wind and its, and its vigorous look. He said, everything that you live according to my word, they will see you blaze like the sun, sing like the bird, and sway like the tree. Because all of it is my glory. Mm -hmm. That's why he says, let your light so shine. Yeah. Because when Jesus showed up, did he show up as a prophet? I'm going to hurt somebody's theology today. My God. Did he show up as a good teacher? What did he show up as? And the word was made flesh. What is the word? Thy will. He said, thy word have I hid in my heart. My precepts. He says, uh, he says, he says, he says, I delight in thy precepts. For thy precepts are thy principles. He was saying that the word of God is his will. But the will of God is his principles. But Christ come being the fullness of God. And the word in John called him Logos. The whole embodied truth. The whole fullness of God's wisdom and word compiled in human flesh. Amen. Revealing to all that see him the plan of God. And you telling me I got to find somebody else? That there's another way? Where is it? Who else holds the fullness of God? Who else came and became the word of God made flesh? Who else died? On the cross and on the third day, got up and then went to his boys and sat there with them for 40 days, teaching them about the old and the new, and then re resurrect out of here and suck the Holy Ghost for them to preach the gospel to us, to which we are saved today. And you're saying to me, I got to look for the will of God. No, I got to submit to the will of God. All right. Because ultimately, God's will is known. Romans, I think, uh, either chapter 2 or 3, he says, for those not having the law, he says, they having the law will be judged, and those not having the law will be judged. And he says, how is it those not having the law, they do the things of the law through their conscience? Mm -hmm. What may be known of God is known, is seen in their conscience. They accuse and excuse. And let me say this. You can't fool, you may fool everybody, but you ain't fooling yourself. Because right. your conscience bear record of your ways. Yes. Yes. And the will of God comes in your conscience and say, I'm here. Come here, Jeremiah 29. Let's quote that. My plans is will yes. for you. you His plans. When, when, when you find yourself in a place that you're confused, His will has not changed. The writer said, I will that you be holy, Ephesians. Yes, yes. Before the foundation of the world, uh, Ephesians 5 uh, and 17, it says, therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of God is. Understanding what God's will is, is what Paul said. He chose us before the foundation of the world that we, we should be holy, blameless before him in love. He chose us for his workmanship, Ephesians tells us. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we sh should walk therein. From the foundations of the world, he had a plan for you. He didn't want you to be dirty. He didn't want you to not have a father in your house. He didn't want you to pop up pregnant without a husband. He didn't want none of that. He said, I had a plan for you. He didn't want you dropping out of school. He didn't want you being a murderer, a liar. I didn't want that. That's never was my plan. But for the foundation of the world, I put you in me. I put you in my glory. I put love on you. I put holiness on you. That's why he said, the my sanctification is his will because this was his thoughts of me. But now that I live in this world, why, why do I look like what he promised me? Because it's not thy will. It's my will. Yes, yes. And my plan is good, but sin was evil. My ways was right. But rebellion was wrong. He told the woman, have every tree of a garden, man, have every tree of a garden, you shall surely eat. You got freedom. You can eat what you want to eat. You can go where you want to go. Is there nothing I, is there nothing, is, he told David, if you would have asked for anything, would I not have given it to you? Yeah, yeah. He said, but then the devil shows right up. Have God not said what did he do? He changed the will. Yeah. 
to change the world. When she saw conscience, it was good. Make one wise, no one. She ate it. Her will. Then he had to go back and say, now nah, let this mind be you. Be transformed by renewing your mind. Because your mind has got come up. And if we think, and this is why I'm saying, and I'm, I'm closing, but if we think this world is not changed or, ch or turned, then we're in denial. We can't accept, we, listen, you can't expect them to have the same desire you have. You can't expect them to have the same understanding you have. He just said, they took the glory of God and made it something else. Right, right, right. Professing to be wise, their foolish hearts became dark. Having wisdom, but when they did not glorify God with wisdom, I would destroy the wisdom of the fool, I, I, the wisdom of the wise, and I would bring to naught the understanding of the prudent. Because you don't want to glorify me, I'm going to let you in your own devices show you what your wisdom looks like, what your will looks like. Yeah, and when yeah. you get a taste of your own will, Israel, when I let you go and let you follow them because you want to be like them, I'm going to let the Babylonians get you, Judah, uh, Assyria, uh, uh, Israel, the northern tribe. I'm going to let Assyria get you because you want to be like them. You want their will. Yeah. Then I'm going to let you have it. Come here, somebody. Can I preach to somebody right quick? When I thought I wanted, after God turned me over to myself, I didn't want it. I heard someone testify, said, I got so high, I got so drunk, I was so messed up, I was so gold, but it got to the point I heard God call my name. In the drug house. Because over, he turned me over to myself to where, as Samson said, I shook myself, and I did not know the president. God, not that God, and a lot of people say, well, what's the difference between Samson and a reprobate? A reprobate is God had never touched them, and he's been rejected. Samson is that God's absence wasn't his denial or rejection. God's absence was to show the difference between God with you and God not with you. What God's presence would do, the earth is full of his glory, how it will cover you, how it will protect you, how it will make you fight. And now where's your strength? When you get the will of God, you got God's word. You got God's glory. You got God's favor. You got God's protection. You got God's plan. You got God's promises. You got God's way. You got God's resurrection. You got God's heaven. You got God's righteousness. You got God's promises. You are against God. to life. Your mind is constantly renewed. You're constantly strengthened. You've been created unto all good works. You will run and not be weary. You will go and watch it. Uh, go and not say because when you got the will of God, there's nothing in you. It shuts down. The writer says, we're kept by the power of God in the last days. Not thy will, but thy will. Can I close? When I think about the text, I think about Jesus being in the garden of Gethsemane after living all that the Lord told him to live. After preaching the gospel, after laying hands on the sick, after fulfilling the prophecies, after discipling the twelve, after all that God done done, he gave him now this final place. This is the thing that separated Jesus from either being a prophet or from either being a man or either being God incarnate. Because when the time of death comes, the writer said, Lord, I come in the volume of the book to do my Lord's will. The other writer said, he will be comfortable with grief. He will be like a sheep led to the slaughter. So it was foretold, he will die. Now it's at the point that he has to die. Because thy kingdom has come and thy will now will be done. So now Jesus is at the final point. He stands in this place. He says, not my will, but let thy will be done. What happened at this point? in his life. He didn't say that when he was laying hands on the sick. He didn't say that when he was even tempted on the mountain when the devil showed up. He didn't say that, but at this point of his life, we get a chance to see the temple of Jesus' humanity when he says stuff like, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He began to reveal to us while you're living for Jesus, there's a law in your member that when you want to do good, evil is present. When you want to pray, you ain't going to pray. When you want to cry out, you ain't going to
gonna feel like crying out. But when you get to that point, when you feel like doing something you don't want to do, he said you got to say to do. Nevertheless, not thy will, but thy will be done. This ain't what I want, but yet this is what I want. In other words, I'm in conflict. When I want to do right, I find myself not doing right. But when I desire not to do wrong, I find myself doing wrong. Then how can I do something I so-called don't desire when I know I should be doing right? He said, I found God. There's another will. Notice the term was law. There's something written in my flesh. What is written in my flesh? No flesh shall glory in my presence. That's one thing that's written in the flesh. What is written in the flesh? Flesh and blood shall not inhabit the kingdom of God. What is else written in the flesh? He said that all flesh shall die. And he said, and when you be absent from this body, it's to be in the presence of God. So what is the principle then? That as long as you're living in this natural world, the world in your, in your carnal body will always have a desire. But God gave you the Holy Ghost that, super, that supersedes the will of the flesh. Come here. And you shall receive power after what is this power for where the writer said that it was for them to be witnesses. Yeah, but while they were preaching, they were delivering. They weren't preaching and not healing. They was preaching and delivering because the will of God is powerful. When you submit to God, you won't be like them the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against those on righteousness. You won't be like them the earth is full of the glory but they don't know them. Their conscience bare, but they reject them. Their foolish hearts is dark. You will be be renewed by the spirit of your mind. Be not conformed to this world but be transformed. You will be the one that's transformed. You will be the one that's changed. Everybody else is going one way. You're going the right way. Broad is the way. But narrow. Men on that wheels. But only one wheel with Trump. And that's the will of God. Give God a praise. Why? This is the will of God. Concerning you. God's will for you has always been that you be saved. Lord, I thank you, Lord, I thank you. That you be whole, that you be delivered, yes. that if you sin, you can get forgiveness, you can be restored, yes. and he can live in you. Yes. The new life, they call it Zoe life, that he can give you a new life. Sit on your feet and say, Lord, Lord. not my will, not my will. but thy will. Thy will. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Let's pray as we turn this back over to Minister Hawkins. There's nobody in this room that if Jesus would say he without sin cast the first stone. There's nobody in this room can pick up a stone. All have sinned and fall short. If a man say he have not sinned, he's a liar. If you just said you don't, you say no. But then the Bible talks about how people are blameless. The people can live a life that's not habitually called in sin. That the Holy Spirit can empower them to be convictional, to be devotional, to be committed. God, we're asking you in our lives that we live in this holiness of God, in this new nature of Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost is in us right now today. God, we're asking you today. Lord, as our wills have been searched today by the will of God, am I in your will in terms of how I'm thinking? Am I thinking good thoughts like you telling me to? Am I in your will about how I view myself? Do I look at myself as perfectly and wonderfully made in your sight? Or do I look at myself as sloppy, slow, and all this other stuff? Am I examining myself according to your will? Do I, Lord, treat people outside of your will? Do I love them like you say? Do I show hospitality like you say? Lord, am I faithful to the fellowship of the saints according to your will for sake not the symbol? Am I in your will, Lord? And we're asking you because we know that the earth is full of your glory and it's revealed right now to us right now while we're in this prayer what we're not doing and what we should work on. 
And so, Lord, we say thank you for giving us wisdom to go about working on them. That we may prove that which is acceptable. That we may show the world that it is the hope of glory in us. That we, when we are called to an examination, that we can give a defense Jesus. for the hope that's on the inside. Lord, we know where we stand because we know in whom we believe. And we know that you're faithful even until that day to keep that which is committed in your hands. For you are faithful and just you said, now unto him that is able to keep us. You are a keeper. Lord, I thank you. So Lord, we ask you through all that you do, keep us continually. Let us grow in the knowledge and the wisdom and the grace of God. Let us be strong and fervent in prayer and, and, and work and service. Let us continue to love each other, build each other, and encourage each other to exemplify the will of God and provoking one another unto godly affections. Lord, I know this is your church, not mine's, not no one else. This is your body. You bled. You died. You rose for these people. You say, woe unto him that scatter my flock. You say, it's more better than a man would try a uh, tie millstone on his neck and be cast in a death of sea in a mess with your least ones. We respect your least ones. We respect your least ones. Bless your people today. Whatever they're going through, whether they hear it or not, let your will be done. In Jesus' name, we pray. And the church say,